it's, it's a visual. Uh, the capital projects office that puts these bids out comes out of my budget, my priorities, meeting, we had meetings over there. I've never seen this happen before, and I'm wiser for it now. I have a meeting actually set up next week, all projects in the future. I don't ever want to see this again. This equipment, and this is going to be the all access, the universal access for uh, children of all abilities and disabilities. Um, and it's going to be beautiful. But for some reason, they bid this job. It's a very expensive job. And all the hard surfacing that was going to had to be done, the site work, as they call it, the site preparation, the, the parking lot, where they're going to put the padding over, the new pieces of equipment, that was all done in the spring. Losing a whole summer of that <coughs> playground being open, and they knew that the, they have to order this equipment. Well, it's not on a shelf somewhere. It has to be fabricated. Uh, you know, everyone's done as the order comes in, and it's like a light standard at the at the playground. There's like a six month lead time on these the places that are making these, and, the, and how much they can do. And I'm I've got to call in right now to see. September was the date I was told, but I wasn't told. I mean, if that's the best we could do, that's the best we could do. But I wasn't told that we were going to be shutting down a playground for an entire summer. Mm. Uh, so it, it, um, it's going to be great when it's over. Uh, it, there's nothing stopping it. The whole thing is done. There was the one glitch in that project was it went over budget on the first bid, and then we had to put the money together between. I got some contribution from Fairmount Park because the parking lot is going to, have to be expanded because they know it's going to be busier. And, uh, but it's going, to be, it's going to be beautiful. I mean, it'll really, uh, really be beautiful. And it, and it had a lot of community input. As every one of my projects in the, I'm calling it the new generation of playgrounds has had. And um, uh, that's what I want to talk about. When I went over to Fox Chase, and I've been there a thousand times, and know the big field, which is now Sweeney Field, um, the hardball field, until I envisioned about two months before the, uh, the dedication day. And dedication was done on a Sunday morning at 11 o'clock because <coughs> McNally's was running the fundraiser for the scholarship fund at Bishop McDevitt. and could have done it any Sunday. But it was done because the ladder company, ladder 10 and engine 7 or 37. Uh, these were the firefighters that Dan Sweeney worked with side by side. They wanted to be the first ones to play on Dan Sweeney Field. And um, I went out and I was just walking around looking and uh, I think I went to an advisory uh, meeting right before that I started talking about maybe doing some more things with the play equipment there. And I stood behind, one day I went by and I just got out of the car, I went over and I said, I can't dedicate this backstop. I mean, this field with this backstop, it must be 60 years old. It's got boards that, I mean, when you think of it in terms of a dedication, well, you got an emergency contract. I had money in a capital budget. It was just about $40,000. And I asked around, I said, what's the best state-of-the-art backstop in the city? He said, Father Judge, of course, Father Judge High School, Ram Playground, which is now part of it, is part of Father Judge.